aspect you mentioned before, California values. What would you consider California values are? What are California values to you? Well, I think California values revolve around justice, the idea that everybody gets a right to live out the California dream, and I think also the value of openness and optimism. I think if you look at California, you start with a, a really beautiful place, and then the people who've come here, and we're a very diverse state in terms of background, in terms of ethnicity, in terms of race, and that's fantastic. And the idea is this is a state where everybody is welcomed, everybody is included, and everybody gets a chance to live out their personal dream. So that's a huge value. And I think that the optimism in this state, the willingness to try new things, the willingness to change, go into a garage with your best friend and change the world is something that's characterized us from the very beginning and it's one of the hallmarks. So I look at this is a state that is full of sunshine and it's a state that's got a real soul in terms of taking care of each other and believing in each other. Now, if you have a garage, it means you have to have a home. And home ownership in California has probably been one of the biggest challenges. It's at the lowest in decades. Uh, what are your solutions to this home ownership problem? Well, if you look at the biggest challenge in California right now, it's really about inequality. It's about inequality in terms of income, inequality in terms of benefits and health care. And at the heart of that is home ownership and where you stay. Where you put your head at night makes such a difference to so much of your life. I mean, it determines where your kids go to school. It determines the air you breathe. It determines how long it takes to get to work. It determines where you get to shop, whether you have access to healthy, inexpensive food. So it's really important, and when you look at California, we do have a dramatic shortage of housing, and then as, as a result of that, we have housing that is extremely expensive in the context of people's incomes. So it's something, you know, last year in 2016, we worked on, I think, 22 local measures that included a lot of low-income housing measures to try and build more housing, affordable housing that working people in the state of California could live in and then pursue their dream from that place. And if you have to have, if you have housing, you have to have water. Now, Governor Brown declared an end of the drought for most areas, but uh, not for Fresno County and a couple other surrounding counties. Uh, obviously, we have had a lot of rain this season, but the question is, where do we store it? Uh, some people think the solution is build more dams, build more reservoirs. How do we capture that water that comes when we have a wet year like we did this year? I think that's a great question. One of the things that California is very lucky about is the fact that we get a very good recharge of our groundwater. So it's funny, we've been the only western state that hasn't really closely um, controlled the use of groundwater, but we're lucky in the sense that when we get a really big year, our groundwater, the aquifer under the land, recharges very quickly, which is a great fact. I think when we look at California, this drought has forced us to think imaginatively and innovatively in terms of how we collect the water, how we store the water, and how we use the water. Because the fact of the matter is, if you really think about climate change, it's not that we're going to get less precipitation overall. It's going to come very differently. We're going to have less snowpack, which is what we traditionally did to store the water, mm -hmm. snowpack and groundwater. We're going to have less snowpack because of the temperature. And as a result, we're going to have to be much more intelligent and thoughtful about collection, storage, and use. And if you look around the state of California, which I've talked to a lot of people about this, Californians have responded, I think, very intelligently in a number of different locations, coastal cities, north, and in the valley, to try and do all three of those things. Would you support uh, the ideas of building the site stam, the temperance flat stam? Or, or you I don't know enough about those things. I, I really don't. Okay. What I've seen is probably the biggest thing that as a state we're going to have to do is we're going to have to think about collection and use. I know that there's always a temptation to think the right thing to do is do a huge building project. And sometimes those things are smart. But I think that when we think about these big problems, it's really important to think on a system-wide basis, and that very definitely includes collection and use, because that is where you get real bang for your buck 
in terms of changing the way we do things in a much more tax efficient and you know um, thoughtful way. And so I'm a big proponent of doing the things that are cheap that you can do on your own instead of thinking we just need to build something and fix and we don't need to think about anything. What goes in that decision for you? What will be the tipping point for you to say yes or no, I'm running or not running? Look, I'm the father of four kids between the ages of 23 and 28. I feel as if we are in a national crisis on a number of vectors. I think we're in a constitutional crisis in terms of protecting the rights